All right, this screencast is meant to show you how you can determine a differential rate law using some experimental data. So an important note at this point, especially when rate laws are so new for us in our study of kinetics, is to understand that there are more than one type of rate law. But in this course, we're going to really only focus on differential rate laws. The difference is what they take into account and what relationships they try and relate. So for example, differential rate laws are fundamentally focused on the reactants and how the concentration of those reactants affects how fast the reaction proceeds. So differential rate, rate laws only are concerned with concentration of reactants and the resulting rate. Integrated rate laws take into account concentration and time as well. So for example, we could use an integrated rate law to see how long it would take for some reactants to be used up or to be diminished to a certain concentration level. So let's get started with how we actually determine the rate law, uh, what we would call a differential rate law, which your text and in the discussions in class, we're just going to call it a rate law. So the key thing to remember, rate laws have to be experimentally determined. You actually have to conduct an experiment and see how changing the concentration affects the rate of a reaction. Another thing that's fundamental is the structure. Rate laws are always written in terms of the reactants. So for example, if we have a simple reaction, A plus B reacting to form C plus D, the general form of the rate law would look like this. The rate of the reaction equal to a constant called the rate constant, K, times the concentration of A to some unknown power, which could be experimentally determined, times the concentration of B to some other experimentally determined power. So let's see what a typical problem looks like and walk through one together. Here's a problem where you have to determine the rate law for a chemical reaction between nitrogen monoxide and chlorine gas. You'll notice that four experiments were conducted and the rates of those experiments were recorded as well as the concentrations of nitrogen monoxide as well as the concentration of elemental chlorine. Something that's important to note is that you'll notice that in some situations there are experiments where compared one to the other only one of the reactants was modified. Specifically, take a look at experiment one and experiment two. Notice that the only difference between experiment one and experiment two is that the concentration of nitrogen monoxide has been doubled. The reason why that's important is because we know that whatever change this doubling effect has on the rate is only due to nitrogen monoxide because chlorine was held constant. And we see that the rate does change. So let's take what we know which is that we know the general form of the rate law, and now we can set up a ratio, a proportion between those two experiments and the number values, and we can determine what the value of X would be in terms of NO. So that's going to be our next slide. So the first step when you're going to be writing a rate law is to identify two of the experiments where one thing is held constant, one of the reactants is held constant, and the other reactant is its concentration has changed. And we're going to set up a ratio and compare that ratio to infer what the power or the order of that reactant would be with respect to the rate law. So you notice I've highlighted here NO from experiment one and NO and CL for experiment two. I chose those just because I wanted to figure out NO first. It really doesn't matter what order you do them. But what does matter once again is that you choose two experiments to compare where the concentration of one of the reactants is held constant and the other is modified. So let's see how we can actually get to this conclusion here at the bottom where we see that X should be two in relation to NO. To solve this problem, we're going to set up a ratio, the ratio between experiment one and experiment two. I'm gonna put the larger value of the concentration in the numerator just for simplicity. So I'm, I'm comparing the rate of 2 to the rate of experiment 1. I know what those numerical values are because they're given in the table. 5.72 times 10 to the negative 6th over uh, 1, whoops, made a mistake there, 1.43 
times 10 to the minus sixth. That has to equal K times the concentration of NO in experiment two, which was 0 0.500 raised to some power X, times the concentration of Cl2, which is 0 0.250 raised to some power Y. In the denominator, same thing, except it's a different concentration for NO, but still raised to that same power X and 0 0.250 to some power Y. At this point, I can start to simplify. So I can simplify this expression just by plugging it into my calculator, and I notice that that simplifies to 4. So that 4 has to equal the simplified portion on the right-hand side, which what I can realize very quickly is that these k values will cancel. They'll cancel to 1, and so will our chlorine values. They will also cancel to 1 because they're exactly the same. So the only thing that's fundamentally different that I have to think about is, well, 4 equals 0 0.500 over 0 0.250 to some power x. Now I can simplify what I've written here in blue, and that whole thing simplifies. 4 equals, let's see, 0.5 over 0.25, that's 2, to some power x. And you just think, well, what power would I have to raise 2 to in order to get 4? And then you see that x equals 2. What that means is doubling the concentration of NO has the effect of quadrupling the rate of the reaction. So now at this point, we can actually write part of the rate law because we've solved for part of the solution. So now we know at least that the rate is going to be equal to K times NO squared. Now what we have left to calculate is what the value for Cl2 will be. So we still have that variable to fill, figure out. And that's what we're going to go over in the next slide. We're going to take the same exact approach as we did previously, where we're going to look for experiments where, in this case, nitrogen monoxide is held constant and chlorine is manipulated and compare those relative rates. So just to show you the work for this, we're going to set up a we're going to set up a ratio just like before between uh, in this case experiment four and experiment two because notice that in that case constant the concentration of NO is held constant and the concentration of chlorine is in this case doubled so whatever the effect is on the rate has to be due to the changing concentration of chlorine gas so here's the expression uh, filled in with the values, and when you take the rates and put them in, so 1.14 times 10 to the negative fifth over 5.72 times 10 to the negative sixth, that equals, well, let's do the work here. This simplifies to 1. This cancels out to 1. That's going to be equal to 2 to the y. And notice in this case, when we simplify the rates, we get 2. So 2 equals 2 to the y. Therefore, y must equal 1. And now at this point, we can write the entire rate law as we're supposed to. So the rate would be k times NO to the second power multiplied by Cl2 to the first. And since this is just to the first power, we don't need to indicate that number value in the rate law expression. So our answer to the question where it asks us to determine the rate law is this answer right here. The rate is equal to K times NO squared times the concentration of Cl2.